So in this video, I give an example of perfect substitutes. I show you how to draw the indifference curves with perfect substitutes and how, uh, when a consumer has perfect substitutes consumption, how, how to deal with price changes, drawing the budget constraint, and finding the optimal point. So hopefully this is helpful to you. One of the goods is cases of soda. Now these are 24 packs. And then there are packages of soda, and there are 12 packs. And you might go to the grocery store and face the trade-off between well, how many 12 packs do I buy versus how many 24 packs do I buy. You know, packages of soda, 12 packs, the same brand. Um, if I have two of those, that's essentially the same product as having one case of soda. And so they're perfect substitutes for one another. If I think of two uh, packages of soda is a perfect substitute for one case of soda. One, for example, if I have four packages of soda, that would be the same um, in terms of how well off I am as, as two cases of soda. So this line that connects these two bundles, four packages of soda but zero cases, two cases but zero packages, that's an indifference curve. And what you'll notice is that these are not standard shaped indifference curves. In fact, they look uh, like downward sloping straight lines. And that's what indifference curves for perfect substitutes look like. Well, we could actually draw another indifference curve. And actually, all of the indifference curves will look like this. Uh, they'll be downward sloping with a slope of negative 2. So, for example, I'd be indifferent between 5 packages of soda and 2.5 and cases of soda. Each would give me 60 cans of soda. And so, as a result, uh, I'd be indifferent between these two. Let's go into an example and think about like what would happen if we have uh, some prices. So suppose you go into the store and you see that um, Diet Pepsi is $5 per case, but uh, it's $2 per package. Well, what should you do? You shouldn't buy cases because if, if you bought a case uh, that would cost you $5, you could buy two packages at the same number of cans, and only spend four dollars. The result here is that we're going to spend all of our money on packages. Well, let's let's make this a little bit more concrete. Let's suppose that we have an income of ten dollars. How do we draw the budget constraint? Well, that hasn't changed in this example. Uh, for example, if I spend all of my money on packages of soda, I can spend uh, I can buy five packages of soda, uh, spending all of my ten dollars, and I can buy bundle A. If I spend all of my money on uh, cases of soda, I could buy two cases, and that's going to give me um, bundle B. And as a result, my budget constraint is going to connect those two dots, just standard uh, what we do if we connect the two dots of what we spend all of our money on one good versus all of our money on the other. That's how we draw our budget constraint. If you're just trying to find a point where a budget constraint and an indifference curve sort of look tangent, well, both A and B would be candidates. Let's find out why we would end up at A, where we spend all of our money on packages. I mean, we had the intuition you know, they're cheaper per unit, so we should end up at, at bundle A. But let's actually sort of reason our way through it using some economics and maybe we'll learn a different way to think about how to um, how to find the maximum uh, maximum utility. So let's suppose that we're at bundle B. This turquoise region I just shaded is the area that is better than bundle B. Now what's the area that uh, this individual could afford? Well, this individual could afford this pink area and also afford anything under this budget constraint. Actually, this brown area here, too. Now, I shaded it brown because it's both uh, uh, bundles that this consumer prefers to bundle B and also bundles that this consumer could actually afford. So it doesn't really make sense to consume a bundle that is such that you have bundles that are better than it that you could afford. So let's go ahead and undo this and do the same exercise with bundle A. Well, what, uh, what bundles does, uh, does this guy prefer? He just prefers the bundles that are above that indifference curve. Well, what bundles can he afford? Well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and shade this in. 
That's just the area under the budget constraint. And as you can see, at bundle A, there's no intersection between what I can afford and what I, can, what I prefer. So this bundle A is the best in the sense that I can't afford anything that would make me better off. Now, that's the sense in which uh, we think of A as optimal. And so that's one way to think about why, why this individual would choose bundle A rather than bundle B. And one way that you, if you have to actually graph uh, these perfect, perfect substitutes and think about um, which bundle this person's going to choose graphically, well, there are a lot of straight lines here, but as long as you keep your indifference curves and your budget constraints straight, you can think about the logic of what, uh, what the individual is doing to maximize utility. And if you think about which bundles does this person prefer and which bundles uh, can this person uh, afford, uh, that's going to help you keep this straight. There's going to be a deep discount on cases of soda, well, mostly because their inventory is piling up. And they start selling cases of soda for $3 per case. Well, again, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize that if you were trying to recreate a case by buying two packages, that'd be more expensive. So you might as well buy the bigger package uh, because $3 per case is better than buying two packages. Uh, it would cost $4 to get this, the equivalent of a case in terms of packages. So the way we could see this graphically is if we were to draw the new budget constraint, it corresponds to this price change. So let's go ahead and do that. So bundle A would still be possible if, um, if we uh, spent all of our money on packages. So that bundle A is not going to change at all. But we're going to end up with a new bundle. That's going to be bundle C where we spend all of our money on cases. That's going to be 10 divided by 3 or approximately 3.3. What you can see is that now the budget constraint is going to be flatter than the indifference curves. We can connect point A and point C, and now that's going to give us our new budget constraint. So now let's do that trick that we did before, just to see why we would end up at point C, where we buy all of our cases of soda, but no packages of soda. Let's shade the region that, um, that represents our opportunity set, or the set of bundles that we could afford. Inside our new budget constraints, we could afford all of those bundles. And let's suppose that we're at bundle A. Now, which bundles do we prefer to bundle A? Well, that's given by this indifference curve, this blue indifference curve. Anything that's above that, so for example, this, but also we prefer bundles that are in here. Now, this green region is also, those are also bundles that we prefer to bundle A because those are above the blue indifference curve that goes through A. But we can also afford these bundles in this green region. So we'll move from bundle A toward bundle C. Actually, any point in this green region would be better. But if you draw the indifference curve through any point in this green region, you'd have something similar. You have a similar green region that sort of points toward C. And you just keep increasing um, how, how many cases of soda you buy, reducing how many packages of soda you buy until you end up buying uh, bundle C where you spend all of your money on cases of soda. So now you've got a, uh, an example of how to draw indifference curves for substitutes and how to think about how budget constraints uh, interact with these types of indifference curves. This is one case where you'll with probability one you're going to end up with a corner solution and you're going to spend all of your money on the good that is the cheapest good and that's going to be the result that you end up with when you have perfect substitutes so now let's get ready to rumble